There is so much I can talk about regarding anime. From our Dragon Balls to Demon Slayer, from our manga to our consoles. But why don't we start off with the anime that started the popularity of it all, which is Astro Boy! If you don't know who he is, Astro Boy is said to be the first popular anime character based on manga, providing the foundation of animation of popular comics. Without Astro Boy and its creator, Uzamu Tezuka, Japanese manga and anime might not have seen the great success that followed and continues to this day. So of course the first game I'm gonna look at is gonna be an Astro Boy game, and it's a perfect start! So let's do this! Charges will be kidnapping and impersonating a cat. Astro Boy! That's me! The intro is just from the 2003 anime, but it is still really impressive. I mean, look at this arm cannon animation! It's just smooth as a glazed tile! Oh, I love it! The game's pretty much a free roaming game, but I say free roaming as lightly as possible. Because when you're actually flying, all you do is just go from one part to another without really anything stopping you. No real difference when you're walking as well, except that you look like Woody from Toy Story. I mean, you can fly through rings, but don't expect this to be Tom Clancy's hawk. You can simply just lock onto every every ring and he don't really even have to stay. Oh, and uh, from what I can see, you don't even get anything from doing this. By the way, be careful when going through these golden rings because they just give you a tiny little- <laughs> Astro also has this really strange ramping speed when running. He starts off really slow only to follow this unreliable acceleration and movement speed, making him feel like a- a few 500. The flying is where the controls feels at its best. Even though the boost is not especially fast, the controls on it feel pretty good. It kind of feels like the R Wing from Star Fox. But only in Metro City, as the minute you boost into combat, it'll take you some time to get used to the camera controls because they're as sharp as a pillow. You can only center the camera in front of you using the buttons, and you can't use the left stick to control the camera at all. I don't know if I'm just a princess and I expect this to be the norm, but I tried everything in my heart, and this camera still doesn't like me! The only way to make the boost useful in combat is by locking onto the enemy and boosting, because you just keep on attacking him constantly like a mosquito trying to suck from a hairy chest. Oh, supersonic hearing. I wonder how that's going to be useful. Oh, you also get laser fingers later on in the game. Don't use it. It's a waste of your special meal. If an enemy's far away, you might as well just fly up to it and kill it. The laser's as useful as a fly swat. And that's not even a joke. Look at this. I'm not even aiming. I just wanted to talk to the NPC, I don't know why I did that. This game is nothing special, it's not horrible, I can see someone enjoying this game to a certain extent, but not me, I find this game pretty boring for my liking. The only real challenge that I found in this game was actually during the first main boss. I genuinely had to read his moves to make sure to dodge, and the broken mosquito move that I've been doing all game had no effect on him. It was actually a really nice challenge, I've started to enjoy the game a lot. Until I found out you could pick up a lamppost and beat the living diesel out of him. Say you're sorry. You're sorry. Holy sh- this game is pretty good! Omega Factory is a beat em up game. Even though it looks like Mega Man, it plays fairly differently. Astro attacks using the usual 1, 2, 3 punches, but he also has kicks by pressing down and punch, making the enemies roll, which in turn knocks the enemies into each other, stunning them for a brief period of time. Doing damage to enemies will slowly fill up your EX gauge at the top of the screen. Once the gauge is filled, Astro is able to perform a special attack like the Mega Laser or my favorite screen clear, the Bat Gun! Well, that was bullshit. Also, every new character that you meet scores you a point that can be used to improve one of Astro's stats and abilities. And you find these characters by exploring the level, finding different ways to beat the stage, adding replay value. If life worked like that, I would have had like three points because I don't have many friends. You have flying stages? Where was this game when I was 10? I mean, you can still fly and dash around in normal stages, but for some reason, the professor limits your jets so you can't fly indefinitely. Why give me the option to upgrade the flying if all you do is limit me, you asshat? This the game is so f***ing hard! It probably doesn't help that I picked the hardest mode, but what can I say, I'm not a pussy. Nothing destroyed my morale like the first boss of the game. At first it just came across as an ordinary boss fight. He hits as hard as a concrete slab, but I got used to it. Until you put him at a sliver of health and then he just starts jumping and he doesn't stop jumping and if he jumps on you, you instantly die! You need surgic precision just to make sure that you can still hit him while he's jumping and you can only hit him once! And if you f up the timing, what? Oops! Then once I actually beat the first boss, I went to the second boss and it just didn't work. It glitched. The ball was tiny when it was actually big. The hitbox was f***ed 
out. I went to the next game and I never looked back. Bakugan is the coolest! Does anyone actually remember Bakugan? Well, if you don't, Bakugan toys actually released in conjunction with the anime. The toy uses these spherical spring-loaded miniature figures which represent the Bakugans. And once you roll them onto a special gate card, they pop open. As a kid, these things were the shit. They were the coolest thing ever and I wanted to collect them all. Some of them are dragons, some of them are snakes, and some of them can be these weird f***ing things. I was gonna buy some Bakugans to show you how they work, but I recently just moved house so it was either buying Bakugan or food. How do you roll? The flicker! The what? When a toy or card game becomes popular, it gets a video game adaptation. Just look at Yu-Gi-Oh, it's on every f***ing console. And just like Yu-Gi-Oh, you need to have a cool protagonist name. You have Midoriya from My Hero Academia, you have Naruto from... Naruto? And Goku from Dragon Ball. Bakugan has f***ing... King Dan. So you get to pick an element here and I decided to go with darkness for no particular reason other than the fact that my character's texture is bug and he looks like a heartless from Kingdom Hearts. At the beginning of the match, players will place a gate card which will land on the field. Then they must choose one of their Bakugan and throw them by aiming and steering to make them land where needed. A player can even shoot the opponent's Bakugan while it's rolling, potentially sending it off the board or causing your opponent to miss the boost like a stupid bit. To win a match, you have to win three gate cards, and there's three ways of doing so. One of them is called Double Stand, which happens if someone lands two Bakugan on the same gate card. A critical KO is when another Bakugan knocks another one off the gate card, which I haven't done in this game at all, so here's a free video, you're welcome. I thought at one point I did get a critical KO, but then this happened, which I- it's fun. it's cool, it's FUNNY! And lastly is by battle. When Bakugan from different sides stand on the same gate card, it starts a battle. It's possible at that point to activate up to three ability cards in order to power up your Bakugan or change the battle rules. By winning, you gain Bakugan points, which can be used to upgrade Bakugan or buy new Bakugan, gate cards, and ability cards. I was gonna play more of this game, I really did start to enjoy it, but the power battle with the joysticks where you keep on doing this was a massive health risk. Oh my god! The only thing I hate worse than losing is not winning. In the year 3000X, the entire world is under the tyrannic rule of the regime called the Chrome Dome Empire. Its ruler, Caesar Baldy Bald has initiated the Hare Hunt, a crusade where his army, the Hare Hunters, invade settlements, shave bald every person they see, and leave said settlement in ruins. Standing against the Hare Hunt is Bo 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 Bo, a rebel who fights the Hare Hunters with the super fist of the nose hair, a martial art that's given him the power to control his nose hair like whips. His group consists of Gasser, a teenage boy who fights with the super fist of the back wind, allowing him to weaponize his own farts. Beauty, a teenage girl bo 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 rescued. There is also Don Patch, a creature who leads the Wiggin Gang, a group that fights by confusing their enemies into submission. I mean, it's working on me. This is the weirdest anime I have ever seen. Watching this show is the equivalent of being high on paint. But this video is not about the anime, it's about the game that came from the anime. But I'm pretty sure that the game's not gonna be weird as the anime, or even weirder. I mean, it's probably going to be some sort of action RPG for the PS2. I can't possibly see it being anything else. <laughs> I was so wrong. They embraced the anime more than I thought they would. From the cutscenes making no sense, from the end of level cutscene being a slideshow, to one of the characters in the main level that you can see being a pickle, from the game sounds and music sounding like this. <laughs> <sighs> Alright, okay, so the gameplay. Well, the gameplay features a reverse camera system by which bo 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 moves towards the camera. And by using the two analog sticks, you can control bo bo bo's nose hair to fend off the approaching enemies. Also, by pressing the shoulder buttons, you get like this screen clear attack where instead of using your nose hair, you use your armpit. I'm not I'm not even surprised to be honest. Come on, here! Hey, Lou! 
think I'm gonna go to the next game. It's so hard! So at first glance, you would think that this is a Mario Party ripoff. Well, you're actually completely wrong because unlike this One Piece game, Mario Party is actually good. Mario Party had stages that were just pure eye candy. Little details here and there that made the dice rolling part of the board actually exciting. Creating a good in-between from the mini games to the board game. This is what you get in One Piece. I know you're excited. The main style of gameplay is the board game, which features a massive game board consisting of dozen of panels. The objective of the game is to have as much money as possible. Each player has two varieties of money. The money earned from winning minigames and the money earned from simply owning a panel. Each of the four players take turns on covering panels around the game board. Who goes first is determined by the minigame at the beginning that takes place in the center panel. And the minigame preparation music makes me feel like I'm running away from a lion. While at the beginning players can only uncover panels that are close to the center one. As the game goes on more panels are uncovered. A panel owned by the player is marked by being bordered with the player's color. If it's gray then no Nobody owns it and anyone can select it. His name is Zolo outside of Japan? Who the f- well, How are the mini games though? There must be so many for how small and boring the board is, right? Well, let's compare. Mario Party 4 had 60, Mario Party 5 had 77, Mario Party 6 had 82, and Mario Party 7 had 88. These are impressively big numbers. One Piece must really be back here. 30. Pirates Carnival only has 30 f King mini games. The mini games also don't have a practice button, which could have been useful since the description of the mini games are ass. Have I got a treat for you? You can't talk about anime classics without Ghost in the Shell. Primarily set in the mid 21st century in fictional Japan city known as Newport City, the manga and the many anime following the. Listen, if I end up talking about Ghost in the Shell, I'm gonna be here for longer than the time that this video actually is. I'm not gonna be talking about the anime, just the game, but I do recommend you watch the movie and the anime for this series, it is one of the best out there. And it's also the reason why The Matrix was made, because that's where the inspiration came from, so you better be thankful. Well, how is the PS1 game? Honestly? I think I'm in love. So you control a spider-shaped tank robot known as Fuchikoma, if I butcher that, I'm sorry. That is able to jump, thrust forward, strafe to the side, climb walls, and hang upside down from f***ing ceilings. The camera auto adjusts in positions when scaling walls and ceilings for easy maneuvering, and automatically switches between first and third person perspective depending on the environment. But you can choose to stay in first person if you want to heave all over the carpet. The tank is equipped with two machine guns and a guided missile. Both weapons have unlimited ammo, however up to six missiles can be launched at once after a charge time. You can also find grenades throughout the level and missions, and a maximum of three can be carried at a time. But the grenades won't help with the boat level. To this day, I still don't know how this thing works. Can someone tell me how you control this shit? I feel like I'm controlling the map around me instead of the actual mech, which, which is great, because I do love Super Monkey Ball. The music in this game was praised as well, but to be honest, I think it's a bit hit and miss for me. So, I mean, some of them sound great, no issues at all, but then there's some of them that just sound like dial-up internet. My Hero 1 Justice 2 is a 3D arena fighter, and it's an obvious sequel of the first Justice game that came out in 2018. And if you're wondering what storyline it follows, it starts off from the provisional Hero License Exam arc all the way to the Shihazaki arc. Like I said before, this is an arena fighting game, a subgenre of fighting games that focuses more on free controlling 3D movement and a camera that follows the character. Unlike other traditional 3D fighting games that still maintain the side view and side scrolling orientation to the attacks. Think of it like Tekken, but just worse. Oh my goodness! I don't hate arena fighting games, not in my honest opinion, I find them a lot more fun than traditional fighting games. They're just not as competitive and they don't really feel satisfying to play and so after a few matches it gets stale, at least in my opinion. Yeah, you can say the movement in these games is a lot more dynamic as you can freely move wherever your heart desires, but the complexity of half circle and quarter circle combos are sacrifice which makes it just not as rewarding to play. It also relies way too much on this rock, paper, scissors kind of gameplay so it just ends up being a prediction match on who does whatever. Kind of the same reason why I'm not into the Naruto games, but the Naruto games just do it better since, you know, people still play the Naruto games. I, I mean, I, have you heard anyone talk about this game lately? No, he didn't! The style is there, but it's not enough to really stand out, especially because this is just the first game, but slightly better. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I, ju I just didn't realize I was playing all the what? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm definitely harping on this game a tiny bit, but it was just so close, it was so Close. Some characters play so uniquely to others, I was actually having a blast playing them, but it just made me wish for one thing. Dragon Ball Z Fighters, but with the My Hero characters. That would be the sh**.
Shit. Now I'm angry and thirsty! Dragon Ball Z Virtual Reality Versus, one of the rare Dragon Ball games that doesn't wind you when you try and say the title. Although the game is in 2D, the camera is set behind the character you're playing to create a 3D-like experience. The game is controlled with a joystick and three buttons, though a deluxe edition of the game features motion sensors that allow you to move your body to control the character in the game. I did not bother to look into this because it sounds very expensive. You have to beat the entire roster of characters in a set order, and when you defeat one, you gain a Dragon Ball. After defeating the fourth fighter, the fifth one pits you against a carbon black and white copy of the character that you picked. He mimics every move that you do, but for some odd reason I could not beat this twat. It was probably me not understanding how the game worked because I pressed every button I possibly could and something random happened all the time. So I never reached to the final boss, but I found out who it is and what happens after you beat them. So after you defeat the clone, he reveals himself to be the final boss, an original character called Majin Risotto. After you defeat Risotto, you earn the last Dragon Ball, and depending on the character that you play, you earn a different ending, cause it's a different wish. Goku wishes for lots of food, Gohan wishes that his mother would forget about him studying for a while, Future Trunks wishes for his father to be alive in his timeline, Piccolo wishes to fight the strongest person in the world, and Shen Run sets him up against Satan. Mr. Satan. And finally, Vegeta wishes to have the world beneath his feet, causing Shenron to mistakenly make him a giant. I f love this anime so much. All right, Gunpachiro Kamapoko. Welcome to Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles, another 3D arena fighter where it takes place in the first season of Demon Slayer and the Mugan Train movie, where the gameplay features some exploration elements and the story is told through various cutscenes and boss battles with demons seen in the anime series. This game is the definition of style. It's so such a pretty looking game. In fact, the style of the game is almost identical to the high budget anime and I fucking love it. Dragon Ball Z Fires was praised for looking like the anime and I think Demon Slayer should get the same praise. Yes, it is an arena fighting game so some of the issues from my hero can be seen here as well. But there are way more ways to perform unique combos in this game and you still get the auto combo so this game is just as accessible as my hero. And when you make your own combos and you mix in the special attack it's just pure eye candy. It's kind of sh** how you have to play the story mode to unlock all the characters but the story mode while not amazing was way better than my hero. Sure wish everyone walked a bit faster though. I bet you weren't expecting this shit. Found these uh, Demon Slayer Tamagotchis. Did not know Tamagotchis was still a thing, to be honest. But apparently there's a lot of different versions of newer Tamagotchis. These are slightly older ones that have the blind guy from Demon Slayer and the wind pillar who looks like he's about to kill a child. All right, Jen, what we got? It's got a little pull thing. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you... I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I have very big, big hands. So we pull this shit. Oh! I have no idea what's happening. Oh, is that him? Have I have I made him a pet? Why are you pissed at me? I didn't do sh Have a rice ball. You're welcome, prick. Hiya! Oh. Hiya! Jesus! Right, uh, I'm gonna assume there's more mini games to play. There we go, okay, so what the hell is this? What the hell? I'm pressing the- look at the difference in the buttons! My form is- my form is the Tamagotchi! Look at this shit! I use my crusty nails to actually hit these buttons. Here! All right, I guess I'm done with that one. Wind pillar time. Hopefully this is somewhat different. Something tells me it's not going to be. It's the same thing. I'm guessing you evolved the person into the wind pillar, but this is kind of... Let me see, does it? I'm guessing it has the same games. If it does, I won't be surprised. One. Yeah, it does. But yeah, that's about it. I don't know how to end the video, so bye.